Good morning. We got Brayson with me. Can you say hi? Good morning. Good morning. Rylan and Grandpa are down there starting fire. Um, but we are going to get our field cultivator out and ready to go here today. So we used it the other day, but we didn't really go through it. I need to check it just to make sure the tires aren't too bad. Uh, we need to change some, some uh, shovels, sweeps, and uh, get it ready to go. And we should be able to do everything that I want to do with it today. Uh, it's cold right now, but it was warm yesterday. I think the ground is thawed out enough or will be here shortly. Brock's going to be here in a little bit. He's going to run the disc today, I think. And uh, we're going to try and knock out a bunch of the tillage that we've got left to do. Oh, she's a cold one today. It started. I took it for a second. So I don't think we need to do a lot here. Um, obviously we ran it the other day and everything ran fine, but there are a few uh, shovels that are, are pretty worn out, like that one. That whole one side the wing is gone, so we need to change that and go through and just check things out a little bit. We got most of the life out of that one. Gosh dang it. I just, I thought I was filming. We're checking tires. That one's good. That one up there is flat. This one's just a little low, I think. We gotta check the pressures in the book. Brock's here helping. There's one on the packer that's low too, so we'll get those. I changed a few shovels. Wasn't as many as I thought. I threw a few in the tractor in case we need to change some later. And I think we're pretty good to go. Could grease it. There's not a lot of grease works on this. It's like these pivots right here is about it. There's not any on the shanks. There's not any on the fold points. Wheel bearings and uh, these casters, I think, is all there is. We had to come in the house to get Bryson's coat. Grandma's getting ready for the game on Saturday. Remember all those Buckeyes we picked up earlier this year? Drilling holes. We'll see final product, product later. You ready, bud? Yeah. We went and started up the 8R for Brock so he can go and disc when we're done getting the fill it ready. Phil's got the generator running. He's going to start coring some bins, moving a little bit of grain, I think, which is not a bad thing. And, uh, yeah, should get a lot accomplished today. All right, one last fuel fill-up of the year for that tractor. I think we got everything ready to go, so I'm going to send Brock out with the disc. I might shut this down and go watch and make sure that the ground's not still too frozen for the disc get him started and then we'll come back and grab this and hope the same otherwise we'll have to wait a few hours all right we got the tractors both fueled up brock's heading to the field i'm gonna go ride around with him just to make sure things aren't too frozen yet all right we'll see how this goes just walking across the little end rows doesn't look good but we will see did what fix the window this is not the window that broke no face is so dirty kid very deep with the disc so it's not like it's um you know gotta be dirty. it thaws out quickly is what I'm trying to say that top two inches shouldn't take that long and it was like I said it was in the upper 40s yesterday sun shining we're in the mid 30s now it should warm up even more all right well I think it looks okay it's maybe a little bit hard not ideal but it should get better um, throughout the day because it's warming up and it's going to keep thawing out. So that's good. Brock's got a whole list of fields to do. Nice thing about the disc, you can go fast so you can cover a fair bit of ground. But you got to finish this one where Phil was working on Friday and there's not a whole lot left here. It should only take half hour or so. And then across the road there's a field. There's another field over there across the road and then there's another couple down the road a little ways. 
And then we've got a couple, or one bigger one over that way that if he gets that done, we'll be in good shape. So, Grayson and I are going to go try and field cultivate. We'll watch from out here for a minute while he takes off. And we'll go. I hear Rylan wants to ride in a tractor and not a backhoe, so that would be me most likely. Ooh, it sounds hard. Where there's no cover, it's the ground's definitely harder. That's a little better. Yeah, it's doing a good job. You can see where it's breaking the stalks part. Well, maybe you can. I maybe you can't. I don't know. A jet. Oh yeah. But it's it's doing what we want it to do, breaking the stalks down and pushing them down into the ground. So I'm happy with that. I'm just a little concerned we're being a little rough on stuff with the ground being a little hard. What? Turns out Ryland doesn't want to ride with me. He wants to ride with Brock. How long is this going to last? 600 years. 600 years. Okay. So we brought him over here. And I'm going to give Brock a camera. We'll see if he'll film anything for me. Okay. Well, it's a quarter after 10, but we are finally ready to go with the field cultivator. So we've got a 46 ish acre field down the road that I want to do. We're going to go there first. That'll take us till lunch and then we'll come back and get lunch. Then we got 140 to do after that and uh, we should get it done today without too much trouble. So this is the field that we've got to do. This is one where we did a little tiling back over there this summer. Dad cleaned out along the ditch there. He filled in this low hole here and put some extra dirt in and um, yeah, we got it all worked down nice, so we're going to try and fit this down to see what things look like. So we're going to start over there by the road, and uh, it should be nice. It's pretty flat. There's just a little knob right here that's kind of high, but everything else is pretty flat, and we don't have to worry about uh, the water running across it and washing. So get unfolded and get our computer set up, and away we'll go. All right, well, this is... This is great. This looks beautiful. It's working up really, really well. And uh, not really. we've even got some, some dust. It's dry. It's not hard. It's, yeah, this is for fall. It couldn't get much better. So I've got a sleepy one, which is fine. And uh, yeah, so. Oh, one other thing I wanted to talk about. So I did the show, us doing this on Friday, right? Um, and I talked about the uh, why we're doing it, why we don't like do why we don't do it a lot why um, what the negatives are right? and the big one that I pointed out was erosion from water running across it and I got a lot of comments about what about wind erosion we don't that's, that's not something that really crosses my mind uh, unless we have a really sandy farm with loose soil uh, this ground's not going to blow away it's not something that we worry about we have a lot of trees right so it's not like the winds can get whipping through here like they do out west in the Dakotas, and Nebraska, and different places. Um, and our soil has got a lot of clay in it. So as soon as this stuff gets rained on or it gets wet, it kind of crusts over and it forms a, a, a seal on top of that ground. And it, it's not going anywhere. So uh, I don't worry about wind and erosion. Hello. Rylan and I are out here disking. Disking some corn stalks. Is that right? Yeah. Well, Nathan wanted me to get some video, so here we are. Here we got the land all out here, 27 foot at a time. It's The ground's still a little hard, a little frozen, but it's chopping up the corn stalks. We're not trying to go deep into the ground. Uh, you can see over there, well, maybe you can see where we did, where we went already. And here where we haven't. It. It's chopping up the corn stalks pretty good. Um, like I said, the ground's a little hard, but it should thaw out throughout the day. So we're just gonna keep chugging along. We have, we already finished one field that Phil did the other day, or started the other day. We're in another one that Phil started the other day. And then we have one, two, three, and four more to do today, or hopefully get done today. So Rylan and I are just gonna keep chugging along and hopefully get them all done. We're in the 8R. Oh yeah, we're in the 8R. Because what happened to the 8430? 
windshield broke. Yeah, the windshield broke out of it the other day when Phil was taking it to the field trying to disc. So we switched tractors and here we are. Keep disking. Well, we don't have a whole lot left here. It's 11.30, we've been out here for a little over an hour now, I guess. Still got dust. Still doing a pretty good job. However, I am finding some spots over on this side of the field where we put those tile lines in. It's a little rough. And I, I, I hope it'll winter out and it'll be okay to plant, just straight plant in the spring, but I can't guarantee that. We may have to hit this one again to try and level it up, especially if those tile lines settle some, uh, so we're not bouncing across them quite so bad. But. It is what it is, they're not terrible. It's kind of, yeah, you, I don't know if you can see it in the residue and the, the dirt is a little bit lighter where the tile lines are on and stuff. We did have um, our clover cover crop on this field. This was wheat stubble, we tiled it, we had clover growing here. We put chicken litter on it. Um, there's a lot of residue, a lot of plant material and stuff that we're kind of still churning through that soil and helping to break down, so. I don't know, it's, it's still going, doing a doing good job. I'm really happy with it. It's just not quite as smooth as the field we were doing on Friday because of the tile lines and some of the chunky dirt. Ah, oh, we're just about done here. We picked up a stick doing some endros, so Grayson thought we better get it, throw it out. Can you get it? Yeah, good job. This is heavy. Watch out. Don't want it to get you. Ah. There you go. Can you take it and throw it in the trees over here? Oh my goodness. There you got it. You going that way? Around the tractor. Around the tractor. That's a good idea. Ah, it looks really good. Man, this is beautiful right here. Beautiful. Get my Instagram photos. Nice! Well, we're back. Ryland wanted to get back on the camera. So there he is. We're just finishing up in this field here. This is the, well, one that I was on the camera last time with you with. Uh, right there's the road. We only have a couple um, slivers to do yet. And then we'll be on to the next field, which is, well, just up the road. About tenth of a mile so it's not too far on the road and we'll be ready to go after Ryland's eating my fruit snacks and my animal crackers we'll see how much longer he can last well we just got some lunch thanks grandma and uh, we've got some errands to run so we gotta, we gotta go make a trip and when we get back we will um, we'll do the last field that we're gonna do with the field color I tried getting older Ryland to see if he wanted to come and eat lunch he does not. He just wants to ride with Brock and eat all of his food. So, sorry, Brock. Alrighty, so it hasn't been that long since I talked to you last. Um, we did move to the next field. It's just a 30 acre field. Um, but, and it's just down the road from the other one. Like I said, a tenth of a mile, maybe two tenths of a mile. But the soil conditions are so much different. This is a mucky farm, so the soil is, um, I don't say, it's pretty good for doing what we're doing. It's burying the corn stalks, uh, it's softer, so the disc is going a little deeper into the ground there. We do have this wet hole up here, well it's probably not wet right now, but uh, I'm not going to drive through it, but it's very, very mucky soil. So it's allowing the corn stalks to be incorporated into the dirt a little more. Uh, it allows them to break down over the winter time and this disc is doing a good job here. Yeah, it's a little wetter. We're picking up some mud on the tires here in this field, but it's doing a good job. I really couldn't be any happier. I don't know if you can see the strips over there that we've already done. We're stripping, uh, skipping every row, but we're just going to keep chugging along and Ryland thinks we're going to get stuck today. But I, I don't think we will. If I do, then I'm probably fired. So we're gonna try not to. Nathan said go through it. So here we are, full send, right through the wet spot. She's downshifting, she's pulling a little harder. Look at that, beautiful. Right through it. We haven't gone 
Never a doubt. Never a doubt. We're back. We had to go buy a turkey for this weekend. Anyway, we're off to our next field. I don't know if we're going to get this done now or not. It got way later than it's supposed to. It's almost 3 o'clock, so I'm not working super late, but um, we can cover a lot of ground in a hurry, so we'll see how we do. Still got our dust. So this is a 140-acre field here. We've got a couple small pieces and then the long rows over there. We've got a lot of activity in the neighborhood. Neighbor working, they get their corn out, ripping it up, and another neighbor across the road finishing shelling up corn. I imagine that's about their last stuff, so. Lots of activity, and Brock's working not too far from here. Okay, we're just finishing up this first part here. Um, you guys remember earlier when I said part of the reason I wasn't worried about wind erosion was because of the way that our soil, when it gets wet, and it kind of crusts over and seals over? Well, I'm not real thrilled with the way that this thing is working right now, or the way this ground is working up, and I think the reason is because the ground is still super loose. That's not a good spot to show it because I've already done here, but it's uh, it's still super loose from when we chiseled it. It hasn't had a chance to get rained on and weather and to kind of get that crust on it that we usually see over winter, and so we're, we're just, we're leaving little ridges behind, and we're not filling in the chiseled, uh, tracks as well as I would like. It's not, the ground doesn't explode open when you're breaking through it with the, the field cultivator shanks because it's not sealed. It's it's just loose and crumbly. You can kind of see it over there on that side of the bar where we're in the fresh or the unchiseled or unfield cultivated stuff that's just chiseled and it just it, it just moves it around and it's leveling it up but it's not making it super smooth like it does in the spring. See all those chunks and stuff back there? That's, I think, a result of not having any rain on this. It's just not weathered yet. So I'm debating whether it's worth keeping going and doing what it is, because honestly, if this was the spring, I wouldn't plant into this. It's not smooth enough. I would say we have to fit it again, and I don't really want to have to do that. That kind of defeats the purpose. I mean, you can kind of see it here, what I'm talking about. It, it doesn't show up real well, and it's not horrible. It's just not as nice as I would like it to be. So we are going over some of it a second time because I got to get to the other end and we got all of this front area here done. Uh, I'm going to make some rounds in the big part of the field, the long rows there. We'll see how it looks like it's working up there and stuff, but yeah, I don't know. We may quit. The The first field, the one that we did on Friday, uh, that was wheat stubble that was actually fit up early, like in September, one of the first fields that we did. And so it's been rained on. It's had more time to weather down and to get that crust on it and stuff. So it did a better job there, a much better job. And this is way too rough to plant. We, we can't we can't plant that. And while it's going to weather down and, and smooth up a little bit over winter, it's not. It's going to get hard, and it's not going to just totally mellow out like um, like I would like it to. So I don't know. I'm I'm questioning the effectiveness of this pass right now. Welcome back to disking with Brock. We uh finished the field that we were in last time we talked. We jumped to the next field, which was a 10 acre field. We knocked that out real quick. That's just on the other side of this ditch up here. And now we're in a 64, 65 acre field here. It should take us about two, two hours and 15 minutes probably. And we'll have this done. Then we have a hundred acre field down the road there. But it's, it's working a lot better. The ground's thawing out tremendously and it's working down really well. Very pleased. But we're just chugging along right here. It's 218 and we'll just keep going. Okay, we are about three rounds into these long rows here and I just, I'm just not happy with it. So we're gonna actually quit. I, I don't know how well it shows up. I just, if you can kind of look across there, you can see all of those ridges still from the, the chiseled ground and it's just not smoothing it out. It does a much better job after this ground has been rained on and crusted over and weathered and just breaking down a little bit more. And so um, I had somebody ask on the Instagram post that I made earlier today about this and I don't know if they saw Friday's video where I was talking about stale seed bed and what we're doing here or not, but uh, they asked um, you know, what the advantages are to stale seed bed and why, we, why we're doing it and stuff. And there's a big time factor, right? Being able to do some stuff now versus in the spring. And I talked about that on Friday. Um, but what I didn't touch on much was that 
the ground will um, will get that crust on it and I can get on it with the corn planter a little bit quicker in the spring than if we have to do this tillage and actually pull a shank through the soil and stuff. It's got to be a little bit drier to run this. And so part of that is being able to plant it quicker. If this is so rough now or not smooth enough to be able to plant, that does me no good because one thing that it also does is it kind of gets hard on top. That crust isn't as forgiving uh, with the corn planter units as as freshly tilled soil would be. And so if we're going to do it, we got to do a good job. And I don't feel like we're doing a good enough job to make this worth it right now. Uh, so we get up to the road here. We're, we're going to park it and we're going to be done with the field cultivator. And uh, we'll just plan on doing it in the spring like we normally would have. So um, the, 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 the idea was, was there, was a good one. And I think we did a good job, especially on that first field and even on the second one for the most part. This one's just not quite as good. If we would have gotten an inch or two inches of rain on this since we had chiseled it, I think it would be a totally different story. But we haven't gotten that rain, and so it, it just hasn't had a chance to settle down from the chiseling, and that's why we're still seeing the, the roughness to it that we are. And so, um, yeah, not a big deal. It is what it is. I think the disc is still doing a good job because that, that's a totally different process, and we're not worried about it being smooth right now because we know we're going to hit that again in the spring. That's more about breaking stalks down and stuff. So, what do you think, dude? No comment? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we'll park this and find something else to do for the rest of the day. What time is it? It's quarter to four. So, yeah, that's all right. If you've been around my channel long enough, you may remember two years ago, uh, spring of 2020. 21. Spring of 21, um, we were super dry in March, and so we actually did a fair bit of our spring tillage, field cultivating, in uh, late March, like the last third, fourth week of March, and um, maybe we'll get that opportunity again, because, you know, by then it's been overwintered, it's gotten wet, it's actually had some freeze-thaw cycles that help break the clods apart and stuff, uh, all good things, and... Um, who knows? Last year it was too wet to do that. Maybe next year, maybe in the spring, we'll still get it done well ahead of planting and stuff. So I don't know. But it's, it's just it's just not working like I like it. And if you're going to do it in the fall, it's pretty much got to do it perfect. So it's not perfect. We're going to quit. Bearing just went on disc. Yep. Things are going too good for too long. It's uh, 410 right now. And uh, we've been going since about 10 o'clock this morning. And it's been going great go about nine ten mile an hour and then uh this last pass here in the field i don't know if you can see that dark mark but it runs halfway up and there's a clod and uh then back here we we're pushing corn stalks so i'm like something's got to be causing that to do it never did it any other field any other pass or anything like that and it's happened twice so rylan and i got out cleared the corn stalks away and uh we had to go back to the farm and the bearing went out again. Yep, we gotta go back to the farm, change the bearing. Thank goodness it's a wing bearing, so it should be easy to drop that gang, change the bearing. We've done it before, and we'll probably do it again. So, we're gonna fold it up and go back to the farm. See you there. <sighs> Brock just came back. He's probably showing you. I hope he's recording. We've got a bearing out on the disc part for the course that's how this thing works we have bearings go out all the time so we get to fix one this one happens to be the pain in the butt because it's on the inside so you can't just take the nut off without t dropping the gang so we got to pull these two bolts here out the two on the other side roll the whole gang out of there and then we got to punch that roll pin out and take that nut off all right it's out that one's locked up, so we got to get it out of there. Um, I'm going to get this roll pin. I'm going to get it from there. I'm going to have to roll it out farther so you can get a better angle. Okay, the roll pin's out. Wait. Now the big what? impact. All right, Rylan, go. What is it? That's the impact. What? Take it off of there. All right, come on, I'll show you. I think. 
Didn't move it at all. One inch impact, highest setting. So our choices are heat it, cut it, or we try and go from the other way. We'll have to take the uh, roll pin off of this side and see if we can get the nut off of this one and just kind of go the opposite way. But we got to get it out so we can work on it a little bit better. Dang, this one's going to be a pain. We had been re really good at these. Like if it's the outside one here where we don't even have to take it off, I can change that one in less than a half an hour. But the inside one, especially when it won't come apart, it's a lot harder. Oh, the project just gets better. I got that rope in to move. Unfortunately, in the process, I flared it out and now it's stuck. And the bottom side is broken, so I can't get a square hit on it. So now we get to torch it out. Fun, fun. I didn't even have to turn it totally into liquid. We need a new roll pin though. Um, I've got the flare knocked off of it and we were able to punch it out eventually. So uh, let's put this wrench back on the other side. And we'll see if we can get this off this way. Or kick on and build up air. Oh, it's gonna go! Look at that! We won. We won. Kinda. Now we get to take this all apart, replace that bearing, put it all back together. Once you get the nut off, they come apart fast. So uh, that one still had some of the balls from the bearing in there, but yeah, garbage. Fortunately, we have a new one. I think we've got several new ones. On it goes. And everything's got to go back in in the same order that it came off. While you have them apart, it is a great time to check your blades. These new are 22 inches. Whoa. 19 and a quarter at best. Huh. They're significantly more worn than I would have guessed. I think you're going to be getting new blades. I don't want to put new blades on this. All right. Yep, we might be putting new blades on it. But not now. Now here's the tricky part. We have to get that in there far enough to get the nut on so we can squeeze it together. And guess what? We got too much of a gap down here. That's when you get the big hammer out. But I'm going to need to actually hit it. And I can't do that while I'm filming. Like so. Should be good. Bearings are oriented right. Squeeze it. Go. Supposed to be like 1,800 foot pounds of board or something like that. Basically, you go as hard as you can and then you get the slot lined up in the roll pin and you call it good enough. You're not even close. I'll let the air compressor build up and we'll keep squeezing. Well, that went downhill quickly. One of our spacers is on backwards, so we gotta take it apart. Now it won't come apart. Well, that's a real bummer. So we'll have to mess with that in the morning and then keep it moving. But we may have to run and get parts. Um, we have one nut. If we have to cut those off, we have one. We don't have two. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes. But anyway, thanks for watching today. Like, subscribe, questions, comments, leave them down below. And uh, we'll see you again tomorrow.